Have you guys ever wondered why Kenobi aged so much between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope? Save for the fact that they're filmed 30 years apart and obviously using two different actors. One is Alec Guinness and the other is Ewan McGregor. The in-canon reason for this isn't fully yet explained, however, there is a mention to it happening by Darth Plagueis himself. And right after he mentions it, he actually talks about something else which gives a little bit of credence to this and a theory that can develop from it, which my brain just randomly did. So I'm going to read a excerpt from the Darth Plagueis novel, and then from there I can extrapolate on the theory that I have regarding this. But it's pretty cool that Plagueis himself actually explains this, or, or takes note of it. So the situation is between Plagueis and Gardula the Hutt. They're essentially helping each other out in the part of the book, and here we go. Gardula repositioned herself on the litter. I'm aware that you disapprove of spice and slavery, but there are profits to be made on Tatooine by other means. Not moisture farming, then. Gardula glowered. You mock me. Damask motioned negligently. And for those of you who don't know, Higo Damask was like Palpatine's name for Darth Sidious. Higo Damask's was his name for Darth Plagueis. I tease you. Gardula, I know little about Tatooine, other than that the planet was heir to an ecological catastrophe in the dim past, and that its vast deserts now support a population of near-do-wells, scoundrels, and hapless spacers of all species. I've heard it said that nothing pans out on Tatooine, and that beings who reside there age prematurely. Damask knew too that the ancient Sith had once had an outpost on Tatooine, but he kept that to himself. So right here we see that Plagueis himself realizes that when you're on Tatooine and people in general who are on Tatooine age really fast, they age prematurely. He goes on to say that the ancient Sith had an outpost on Tatooine themselves, so Two things here. Either people age really fast on Tatooine because of the twin suns, maybe the harsh conditions, maybe people are just stressed out on the planet, you know, the lack of water, the lack of moisture. Perhaps it's just, you know, really difficult living on Tatooine. Or a theory that I just came up with reading this was that maybe the ancient Sith still have their energy residing on the planet. Maybe that outpost was so powerful in the dark side that all of the Sith who were congregating there perhaps were able to keep this energy or perhaps even put it below the surface of the planet. Just like the Jedi Temple was built over a Sith Temple, which gives to a lot of theories as to why the Jedi were so clouded by the dark side, saying that, okay, maybe, you know, the Sith Temple that was built beneath the Jedi Temple was clouding their judgment. Well, maybe this is the case with Tatooine. Maybe the ancient Sith that had that outpost there so long ago were actually making people age faster. As we do know, this is what happened with Palpatine. I mean, of course, you know, he got blasted by his own lightning because of his fight with Mace Windu until Anakin came to his defense, which I still think it was all just set up to get Anakin to make a decision and turn. However, that being said, it is known that Sith Lords, who are very, very powerful in the dark side, actually end up looking really old, and they weather away physically much more quickly than Jedi, than those in the light side of the Force. It's just much more taxing to be a dark side user. Sure, you get to your potential much faster, and sometimes even stronger than you would in the light side, because you're able to use so many other abilities in the Force. You're not just locked into what's considered good. But there is a caveat with that in the fact that you just kind of age really fast. Your body can't contain that amount of power. And of course this varies from species to species, however especially for humans like Palpatine, eh, yeah, you just kind of wither away. So for Obi-Wan, I could see him aging so much because not only of this immense stress of what happened to him, which is more than just a regular near-doer, as Plagueis said on Tatooine, someone just living out their life, but that coupled with the fact that the twin suns were just beaming down on his skin all day, and the stress of hiding from the Empire and the galaxy, from all of his loved ones dying, Qui-Gon, Satine, Anakin, having to kill Anakin was probably the most stressful thing for him, 
Order 66, seeing the younglings, seeing everyone slain by Anakin in the Jedi Temple. All of these things will definitely make you age much, much faster. His mental health was probably the worst of any human in the galaxy at that point. And, well, maybe, except for Vader. But I feel like all of those things would have really taken a toll on his physical appearance. And this is probably why he aged so fast. That coupled with the fact that, yeah, you know, maybe the ancient Sith outpost that was on Tatooine is actually still emanating dark side energy. Just like the ancient Sith energy that's on Dagobah. If you didn't know, in a very old comic where Yoda, named Minch, is actually fighting a dark side entity on Dagobah, and his essence is kind of just trapped there in that tree. And so when Luke goes in the tree and the Empire Strikes Back, he is actually affected by the dark side energy, which gives him those darker visions. Which is why Yoda says, Your weapons, you will not need them. Because it's really what you take in there in your own mind. So while we don't have a canon answer as to why Obi-Wan aged so much, and mind you, I don't really think we ever will, this is probably the closest and I would say the best explanation that we could get. It's just something that makes the most sense with this ancient Sith outpost that was there. And knowing how dark side energy actually affects humans and affects sentience. It's cool that Plagueis touched upon this in the novel. It's super, super slim. You might miss it, but it's there and it's pretty neat. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Check me out on Instagram at Star Wars Theory, and I will see you all in the next episode on Star Wars Theory. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you. Always. Hey guys, boy, do I have a really interesting video for you today. So, today's video, we're going to learn about Yoda's first name. Now, before we begin, I want to say this was made by George Lucas, but it didn't even make it into the canon of his time before Lucasfilm was sold. So, this made it to a super small tidbit that not many know about but the story is fun nonetheless. Yoda is the most ambiguous and mysterious character in Star Wars. We don't know his first name, or his last name, where he comes from, or even when he was exactly born. So here it is. Yoda's first name was supposed to be Minch. What? Now, obviously this never made it into canon, but it did make itself into a Dark Horse comic in 2003 called Heart of Darkness in the Star Wars Tales series. Now, Star Wars Tales was basically like the legends of legends back when George was still in charge. We have a young Yoda species who had just become a Jedi Knight, and his name was Minch. He fought with the Jedi 700 years before the Battle of Yavin, as we can see here. In this scene, he's fighting a dark Jedi in a battle station. The Council must be desperate to send Padawans after us. A Jedi Knight, I am. Foresee the future. The days of the Jedi are numbered. The legions of the Fashi droves. You cannot defeat us all. Defeat you, we have. Defeat you, I will. Big talk, little one. Don't worry, Minch, we've got it. Surrender, Darksider, we have you outnumbered. Where is your master? You have won this time, Jedi. But I will tell you nothing! <laughs> As the Dark Jedi kills himself like a samurai would in loss of battle, the Jedi Masters run outside to their starship to chase the Dark Side Master. However, he sets course to the nearest planet, Dagobah. Setting course for pursuit, escaping he is. Uh, stand down, Minch. Navcom says it's Dagobah. No technology, massive life form readings, strong storms in the upper atmosphere. He crash lands on Dagobah where his ship is rendered in bad shape. He then searches for his target through the swamps of the planet when he ignites his lightsaber and catches him on the run. As the Dark Jedi Master leads him into the cave that Luke entered in The Empire Strikes Back, or so I'm led to believe, the voice calls out to Minch. A Jedi? You are but a child, small and weak, full of fear and anger. As Minch tells him that he's not a child and that size matters not, the two fight in a lightsaber duel of green and red. When the Dark Side Master grows ten times in size, then shrinks to hundreds of little versions of himself, all attacking like ants. As they tell him that he cannot win, that if he strikes them down, that they'll become more powerful. As they engulf Minch, he swings and slashes to wake up and see the Bafashi laying on the corner of the wall, dying telling him that his mind is weak, full of fear and anger, that he will make a fine addition to the Dark Jedi one day. As he dies, Minch gets a call from his crew. They are landing on Dagobah and will take him back to safety with them. It was over, Minch said. Complete is our mission. As the Bafashi Master fades away into the ground, Minch says, Away from this cursed place, the sooner the better. 
On this fateful day on the remote planet, forever is changed the balance of the Force. A new place of power, anointed with the sweat of the just and the blood of the wicked, is founded. As the story ends, the Dark Master's blood is absorbed into the alive planet of Dagobah, where his dark side energy will forever become one with the cave and planet itself. So although this cool story is extremely Legends territory, I find it interesting how George at least signed off on giving us a story that's like this. Even if we didn't get Minch Yoda, we did get a Minch story. Now many out there believe today that this is Yoda in his younger years, and this Legends comic was made just to show his life in that time. But I believe if they were going to do that, they would refer to him as Yoda himself. Although, you never really know for sure, and we never really will. Thanks for watching today's comic video, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I will see you all in the next episode of Star Wars Theory. Until then, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, remember, the Force will be with you. Always. Now, fulfill your destiny. <laughs>